what we're saying might be the hardest thing you ever do. 1935, the Dust Bowl, after years of neglect, the soil couldn't handle anything anymore. Couldn't handle any crops. Couldn't, it wasn't taken care of. <coughs> Marilyn Chandler McIntyre, in her absolutely outstanding book, Caring for Words in a Culture of Lies, says this. Like any other life-sustaining resource, words can be depleted, polluted, contaminated, eroded, and filled with artificial stimulants. Like any other resource, it needs the protection of those who recognize its value and commit themselves to its stewardship. Friends, the Lord's Prayer is something like Iowa soil. It's the best in the world, so my Iowa friends say. But if it's not cared for, those words can get depleted just like just like all those plains when the winds came up and blew the dirt away in a smoke in a puff of dust. So, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say no. We're gonna say we're gonna farm the soil right. We're gonna do it well. We're gonna we're gonna care for the land. We're gonna care for these words. We're gonna pay attention to them. Are you in? Because this is something that one person, one person can, can plow their own, their own field. But to prevent something like the Dust Bowl from happening in the Lord's Prayer, it's going to take all of us. we all got to work these words. We've got to all work the soil of these words in our hearts. So that way when we pray them, we're not just tossing up topsoil. But we're farming it well. So you can see, pull out your postcard. Um, this side is really simple. It's really simple. It's the Lord's Prayer. There's a date before each um, each phrase, which is one we'll be focusing just on that phrase. This morning, we're focusing on the beginning part of it. Our Father, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. We probably should have divided it up even more because this morning we're going to be spending almost all of our time just on our Father. Our Father. Our Father. The word, the, the prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer was known for a long time in the Christian church as the Our Father because that's how it began. That's how we identified it. Our Father. There's just a couple things that I really want us to, to get on the inside of this morning, when it comes to praying our Father. Our Father. The first thing that I want to draw attention to is that when we say our Father, it's kind of like the way we refer to our parents here on earth, as opposed to the way we refer to our, um, you know, our car or our phone or our house or um, or even our favorite book. Okay? Because we speak to God as our Father, not because we chose Him, but because He chose us. Right? That's how it starts. That's how it starts. The Lord's Prayer is not something that, that you can kind of pick up and say, oh, I think this kind of fits with my understanding of the world, or, or this, this, this squares with my sense of spirituality. It doesn't work that way. Because when we pray, our Father, the Father that is ours is one that gave us life, and we didn't have anything to do with it. There's a lot to do to live into being a child of the Father. Oh, there's so much to do. But when it comes to the basic life, Jesus told his disciples, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. And that gave the disciples the chance every day to choose Jesus. Again, every day of their lives, they had the chance to choose Jesus. 
Sometimes we don't act when we say our Father as if we're treating Him like that. Though oftentimes we say our Father and it feels like ours. Ours and not yours. Let's change that. As we pray this together, let's pray and remember every time we say our Father that He is the one that reached out to us first, that He is the one that, that gave us that gave us the freedom and the space to say yes, yes, let me be your child. And when it comes to Father, a lot has been made about this, this um, the closeness of this word, right? When Jesus said this to the disciples, the way that the disciples knew God was as the creator of the universe. Like literally the person that shaped the mountains and dug out the seas. The one who can cause winds and rain to cease. This is the God that, that people, when they, they even catch the sight of his backside, can't speak for weeks. It's like nothing we've ever known before or seen before. And Jesus taught his disciples to say, our father. Now, I became a father when Roland was born. Before Roland was born, I wasn't a father. Seems pretty basic, but there's something that's really important here, and that's that we only know the father in the context of a son. Right? We only know the father in the context of a son. And this is why Jesus is not something that is dispensable. He's not just a fringe benefit that we get to say, hey, Jesus is my best friend. No, if Jesus, we know, we can call God Father because we know Jesus the Son. But probably the hardest part, maybe, of the whole prayer is the first little word, our Our, when Jesus taught us to pray, saying, pray this way, pray this way, our Father. Pray, pray in the plural. Pray, we're praying with. Um, there are plenty of um, religions and spiritualities that um, will let you do this by yourself. Um, that will let you just kind of, uh, you know, walk through the walk through the woods and have that um, be your your soul, you know, kind of spiritual engagement. And just kind of, you know, let things come and let it flow. There's there's a lot of them that'll let you do that. Um, Christianity's not one of them. If you're here today, you need to know something. That God never called just an individual to do some great work all by himself. But God always called, he calls a group. He calls a group. He calls a people. He makes a people out of a bunch of individuals. Where there was once no people, now you are God's people. We pray our, because we're not praying alone. And this very well may be the most difficult thing of the Lord's Prayer. Because it's so easy to pray, My Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give me this day my daily bread. That's so easy to pray. But Jesus said, Pray like this Our Father. That means that, that means that if you watch MSNBC most of the time, you're praying with people who watch Fox all the time. And if you watch Fox all the time, you're praying with people who watch MSNBC all the time. This is not easy. This is not easy. But it's what God's called us to do. It hurts, doesn't it? Ouch. But it's true. And it's, it's what we get to be invited into. It's what Jesus is calling us to do.
um, I think we should change our service to be like three hours long. <laughs> um, there's, there's so much to this, but so I just want to end with an invitation. I want to end with an invitation to, to pray the Lord's Prayer and notice what it is that you're saying. Make it strange. Make it difficult. If it's not difficult, pray it again until it is difficult. Pray it again until it forms you the way a potter shapes the clay. Because that's what God desires for us. He desires us to be more than just a lump of clay. He wants us to be something beautiful and good, useful, more than the sum of its parts. So pray this prayer if you want to be changed. Pray this prayer and let it mold you. But know that you're not praying it by yourself. Maybe the people that you have the hardest time getting along with in this world are praying the same prayer. And you need to know you're praying it with them. When you pray this prayer, pray it deep. Care for that soil. Don't let it erode and blow up in a cloud of dust. Take care of these words. Let's notice them. Let's know what we need. Let's feel it. It's okay if you don't feel it right now. Pray it until you do. This is God's grace for us. That he holds on to us. Even when we're not strong enough, we don't feel it enough to hold on to him. This is God's grace for you today, for me. Because I don't always feel it either. Let's do this together. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. As the Lord taught us to pray. All God's people said. Amen.